In this video, we will see about AC drives. Here, we will refresh some of the important topics in induction motor which is helpful for learning the induction motor drives. In AC drive, we have an AC motor supplying the load. So, this AC motor will be fed through a power converter from the AC supply. So, here you have AC supply. This AC motor also needs AC voltage. So, this power converter can be a rectifier and an inverter. That is, AC will be converted into DC by the rectifier. But we need AC output. So, again we need an inverter. So, this combination circuit can be used as a drive for AC motor. Or you can use a AC voltage controller. So, in this case you can change the magnitude of the AC output voltage. Or you can go for a cyclo converter in case you want to control the frequency of the AC motor. So, these three power electronic converters can be used for AC motor. So, the AC motors can be an induction motor or a synchronous motor can be used in AC drives. This is a simple induction motor drive system. You can see here, this is an induction motor. It needs three phase input. So, it can come from a voltage source inverter. So, the inverter needs DC input that comes from a rectifier. So, the AC voltage is converted into DC. DC is again converted into AC. So, here you are able to get both variable voltage as well as variable frequency. So, the input for the induction motor can be controlled by the power electronic converters. So, out of um, two types of induction motor that is single phase and three phase, three phase induction motor is widely used in industries. There are two types of three phase induction motor depending upon the type of rotor they have. One is the squirrel cage induction motor, the other one is called slip ring induction motor. We will see the construction of three phase induction motor first. So, the main parts in any electrical machine is that stator and which is the stationary part and rotor which is the rotating part. So, if you take a three phase induction motor, the stator is very simple. You have three phase windings as the stator. So, for that winding you will give the three phase AC supply. And rotor, you have two types of rotor. One is called squirrel cage rotor. Another one is called sl slip ring or wound rotor. Next, we will see about rotor. 90% of the induction motors are of squirrel cage type. Because they have a simple and most rugged construction. If you see this uh, diagram, you can see that the uh, construction itself is appearing like a cage. So, it is called squirrel cage rotor. The only drawback we have in this type of motor is that you cannot increase the starting torque. So, slip ring induction motors will be preferred where you need high starting torque. If you see this speed torque characteristics, the red color one is for squirrel cage. So, you see the starting torque is, this is the starting torque. So, starting torque is low in case of squirrel cage motor. So, when you need high starting torque, you can use slip ring rotor. So, they have a higher starting torque compared to the squirrel cage rotor. Next, we will see about squirrel cage rotor. Actually here the rotor is not a winding. Instead it is called a conductor which is made up of heavy bar of copper. So copper conductors are used and at the ends they are connected to two 
n rings okay they are all connected to n rings so since it is permanently connected you cannot add any external resistance to the rotor circuit so you cannot increase the starting torque in case of a squirrel cage rotor in case of spring rotor you can see the rotor has three phase winding which one end they are shorted here or they are connected in star connection the other end you have slip rings so these slip rings will be actually connected to three brushes and you can add external resistance here thereby you can increase the starting torque of slip ring induction motor let us see the principle of operation of three phase induction motor which is completely different from the single phase induction motor in three phase induction motor three phase ac supply is given to the three phase stata winding so a rotating magnetic field of constant magnitude will be produced and it will be rotating around the stata at synchronous speed okay we will see what is that synchronous speed now this field is rotating and the rotor is stationary so since this stator field interacts with the rotor it will the rotor will experience a force and it will start to rotate in the same direction as the field you see the stator field direction is here this rotor will also rotate in the same direction we saw that uh, the rotating magnetic field runs at synchronous speed what is that synchronous speed it is given by 120 f by p where f is the supply frequency and p is the number of poles so here ns is in rpm we can write this in radians per second also so you remember both the formulas because you need this formulas for deriving torque equation so omega s is nothing but 2 pi n by n s by 60 so if you substitute n s you will get omega s in terms of radians per second so remember both these formulas slip is an important term in induction motor we have seen that the stator magnetic field or the rotating magnetic field always runs at synchronous speed ns whereas the rotor will run at a speed n which is always less than the synchronous speed for example you take this picture you assume that this is the rotating magnetic field or stator field and it is running at a constant speed of ns so this car is driving at a constant speed ns this dog always try to catch the speed of this car but it will never catch but it tries to catch it and it speed is always less than the stator speed so here dog is the rotor and car is the stator so the stator runs at synchronous speed whereas the rotor runs at a speed which is less than the synchronous speed so only when there is this relative speed difference the rotor will be rotating continuously so this difference is called slip speed so slip speed is given by ns minus n and the percentage slip is given by ns minus n divided by ns so this you will get in percentage if you multiply by 100 so slip percentage you can get it the actual speed of the motor will be the rotor speed so actual speed n is equal to ns into 1 minus s or you can write if you want to write in radians per second it will be omega m is equal to omega s into 1 minus s always remember the rotor speed and motor speed are same rotor speed is the motor speed 
the value of this slip ranges between 0 and 1. In induction motor, two conditions are important. That is, one is standstill condition. That is, the before motor starts and after it starts. That is the running condition. So, each have different set of equations. Let us see that at standstill. That is, when the machine is stationary, slip will be equal to 1. You have to remember this one. Standstill s is equal to 1. How you are getting this? ns minus standstill n is equal to 0. So, ns divided by ns will give you slip equal to 1. Okay. So, remember this one at standstill s equal to 1. At that time, the frequency of the rotor current will be equal to supply frequency because only ns is there. ns means supply frequency, synchronous speed, so supply frequency. When the motor starts to rotate, the frequency will depend upon slip, slip speed. So, slip speed is equal to ns minus n. That can be written as 120 fr divided by p. R represents running condition. What is synchronous speed ns here? 120 f by p. Now, calculate slip. ns minus n by ns. So, substitute these two. You will get fr by f. So, leave everything. Remember this formula. Under running condition, your frequency will be slip times supply frequency. Okay. So, you remember this formula alone, under running condition, your frequency, rotor frequency will be equal to S times the supply frequency. Next, we will see what are the difference between standstill condition and running condition. The rotor frequency is F here, whereas under running condition, it becomes S times F. So, under running condition, slips play a major role. And the rotor EMF, if it is E2 here, it will be S times E2 under running condition. And the reactance will be X2 here and it is S X2 here under running condition. And the impedance will be Z2 is equal to root of R2 square plus X2 square. So, what will come here? S times X2 the whole square. Because reactance is nothing but 2 pi F into L. So, F is there. So, instead of F, you have to put S times F. So, you are getting S X2. Let us see the different power stages in an induction motor. First, we will give the three phase input to the stator. So, that is represented by P in. This stator input will supply the rotor through the air gap. So, rotor input is also called air gap power. In between, it has to supply the stator iron and copper loss. So, the total input power will supply the copper loss and iron loss and remaining will reach the rotor. From rotor, mechanical power is developed. But part of the power will be used to supply the rotor copper loss. Iron loss will be very small, so it is neglected here. So, that rotor copper loss will be equal to slip times the input power or air gap power Pg. So, what will be if, if this is Pg and S times Pg goes as loss and remaining will be 1 minus S into Pg. So, this is the mechanical power in the rotor. This mechanical power again has to reach the shaft. So, that will be the output power. So, after supplying the windage and friction loss, you will get the remaining as the output power. So, these are the different stages in induction motor. So, and the efficiency will be output power divided by input power. Out of which you remember these three formulas. So, the rotor 
input or rotor power which is called air gap power it is pg copper loss is s times pg and mechanical power is 1 minus s into pg so these three formulas are very important next we will see the simplified equivalent circuit of the three phase induction motor which we have already studied in electrical machines so here R1 represents the stator resistance and X1 represents the stator reactance. So the uh, suffix 1 represents the stator values and suffix 2 represents the rotor value. So R2 is the rotor resistance referred to stator and X2 is rotor reactance referred to stator and XM is the magnetizing reactance. I1 and I2 are the stator current and rotor current. First we will write all the important formulas. First we will find the rotor current. Rotor current I2 is equal to voltage V1 divided by total impedance. What is that? R1 plus R2 by S plus J into X1 plus X2. So you will get the rotor current. So if you know the rotor current you can find the rotor air gap power or air gap power or rotor input pg is given by 3 into rotor current i2 square divided by this resistance r2 by s and uh, rotor copper loss will be s times this power that is s times air gap power and mechanical power developed is equal to 1 minus s times pg so out of the total power s pg will go waste as copper loss and the remaining power will be used as a mechanical power. Next we will derive the torque equation. The rotor torque T is given by power divided by speed. So what is Pm? Mechanical power 1 minus S times Pg and omega M is omega S into 1 minus S. So these two will get cancelled and you will get Pg divided by omega S. We have already uh, know what is air gap power that is 3 I2 square R2 by S divided by omega S. So you let us substitute the value for I2 and you solve it you will get the torque equation. So this torque equation you have to remember it will be useful for solving many numericals. Now let us derive for starting torque. So at starting that is at uh, standstill condition what is the value of S? It will be equal to 1. Standstill condition S is equal to 1. So if you put in this equation S is equal to 1 you will get the starting torque. So this will be you can see here S is 1 and here also put S is equal to 1 you will get the starting torque. Apart from static torque, you have shaft torque. Shaft torque is output P output divided by omega m. So what is P out means? You have to consider the friction and windage losses. So from the mechanical power developed, if you subtract these two, you will get the output power. Next, we will derive the equation for maximum torque or pull out torque or breakdown torque. So this is the torque equation. So we have to find the maximum torque. For that you can differentiate this torque equation with respect to slip S and equate to 0. So you will get the value of slip at which you will get the maximum torque. So if you see this slip it is a function of R2 that is rotor resistance. So we can say that the slip at which maximum torque occurs depends upon the rotor resistance. Now you substitute this S value here in the torque equation. So if you substitute that you will get the maximum torque equation. So if you see the maximum torque equation here there is no R2. It means that the maximum torque is independent of rotor resistance. But the slip at which maximum torque occurs depends on the rotor resistance whereas maximum torque or the breakdown torque does not depend upon rotor resistance. 
now let us see the speed torque characteristics so it is drawn between torque and speed and torque i have taken in the y axis and speed in the x axis so here n is equal to 0 and this point i have n equal to synchronous speed ns so when n is equal to ns slip value is 0 and when n is equal to 0 slip value is equal to 1 from the torque equation you can draw the speed torque characteristics so it will be like this and this TST represents the starting torque because when n equal to 0 means before starting so at starting you have this starting torque now there is a maximum point which is represented by the maximum torque and SM represents the slip at which this maximum torque occurs now there are two regions in the speed torque characteristics one is from s equal to 0 to sm this region is said to be a stable region whereas the other region from sm to s equal to 1 it is said to be unstable because here s equal to 0 to sm it has a very low value so s is 0 here and it slightly increases so when s is very small the reactance will be very small if reactance is small compared to this uh, resistance you can neglect the reactance and you simplify the torque equation you can find that torque will be directly proportional to slip so you will get a linear wave here so it is represented by a straight line so this region will be stable the other region will be unstable so in unstable region if you see the slip value has increased so as the slip increases the reactance will be more compared to the resistance so you cannot neglect the reactance instead you can neglect the resistance so such cases if you simplify the torque equation you will get torque is inversely proportional to slip and the characteristics will be a rectangular hyperbola so this leads to unstable operation We have already seen about the speed torque characteristics of the induction motor. So we saw only the motoring operation. But when it comes to drives, we should know when the motor can be operated as a generator and when it can be used for braking operation. So here this is a complete speed torque characteristics which will give you the motoring action, generating action as well as plugging action. So in the motoring action we have seen that the slip varies from s is equal to 0 to s equal to 1 and the induction motor rotates in the same direction as the rotating magnetic field and this region s equal to 0 to this maximum torque we call it as a stable region. Next we will see about generating region where here the machine acts as a generator and if you see the speed your synchronous speed is here and this is 2 times ns it means that the motor is operating at a speed greater than the synchronous speed. So if speed is greater than synchronous speed naturally your slip will be negative. So in such cases the motor will operate as a generator. Next we will see the plugging operation. So plugging operation is a braking operation which is used to stop the motor immediately. So here the slip value is greater than 1. So 1 to 2 you can achieve this plugging operation. Here the motor will rotate in a direction opposite to the rotating magnetic field. So how to achieve this? you change the phase sequence of the input power supply so if you do so the rotating magnetic field direction will change and the motor will quickly come to a stop but we have to remove the power supply immediately otherwise it will start to rotate in the opposite direction 
but plugging due to plugging there will be a lot of heat will be generated in the motor which will affect the machine if you see the advantages of induction motor they have a simple and rugged construction and low maintenance compared to dc motors and they are low cost they can operate at much higher speed and they produce sufficient torque and high efficiency and they can operate in any dusty and um, environment compared to dc motor because dc motors have commutators so we cannot uh, use it in explosive environment disadvantages if you see the efficiency will varies with speed and they have low starting torque especially uh, squirrel cage induction motor will have low starting torque and the speed decreases with increase in load applications uh, they are used in almost most of the industrial applications like fans pumps conveyors paper mill the points to remember here are there are two types of induction motor squirrel cage induction motor and slip ring induction motor most of the applications use squirrel cage induction motor in some cases where you need high starting torque you can go for slip ring induction motor and these are some of the important formulas and there are three major regions in the Uh, speed torque characteristics motoring generating and plugging and the slip at which uh, the maximum torque occurs depends upon rotor resistance and the maximum torque will be independent of the rotor resistance if you like the video do subscribe to read electric vehicle channel thank you